What's up, guys? This is Pedro from My Stuttering Life, where you will hear the good, the bad, the very ugly. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry. But through it all, just know that you are not alone. So let's get started. This is episode number 64. And my special guest is Michaela Miski Maya. Michaela is German-Brazilian and currently works as a marketing manager at a software company in Florida where she lives with her husband. Growing up, Michaela and her family lived in places like Mexico City, Sao Paulo, Hong Kong, and Frankfurt. Even though she has been to speech therapists around the world, she would never see any real improvement in her speech. However, after having learned the Del Furo method to overcome stuttering, she finally started seeing results and has decided to open up about her journey of speech on social media and her YouTube channel titled Speaking Michaela. She hopes that by sharing her positive experience with the Del Furo technique, people see that it's not impossible to overcome stuttering. I am honored to have her as a guest with me on the My Stuttering Life podcast. Welcome, Michaela Miski Maya. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for spending your day with me. We are going to have a great time. We have a, a, a lot of topics to cover, so let's get started. So do you remember when you first began to stutter? I was around eight years old, and it was when a friend of mine actually said that that I spoke funny. So I think that was the first memory of mine where I actually realized that, oh, I think I speak differently than others. Oh, wow. Um, many people that I have come across, um, they would also told me that, you know, I talked w weird, you know. Mm -hmm. Mine was at... Um, um, five years old. Yeah. So, wow. Now, does it run in your family? Does anyone else st stutter? So an uncle on sides of my mother's used to stutter. No other family members to your knowledge? No, just him. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Now, um, I covered briefly in the um, intro regarding speech therapy and so you've had speech therapy. What was your um, experience? So my experience wasn't all that good with speech therapy during my childhood. The reason is because when I would leave their office, the stuttering would come back. So in a sense, my speech may have been okay in the office with the speech therapist. But the minute I would go out into day-to-day -day situations or stressful situations, I felt as if I couldn't control my speech. Yeah. How long did you have speech therapy? Like all through all through grade school and in junior high and high school? Um, hmm. It was on and off during. Hmm, I think it was on and off during the high school. And then it would usually go for a couple of months. But then at some point, I just stopped going to those conventional speech therapists because I felt that they couldn't really help me. You were talking about high school. Um, um, as you know, school is, you know, rough for a lot of people. However, if you have a stutter, it's like like one one thousand times more uh rough. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. So how did you handle high school with having a stutter? That's a really good question. <laughs> so I remember high school being a very stressful situation for me. I think that a lot of stutters feel that way, especially because you would go to school and not know if your speech was going to have a good day or a bad day. And then I would also always be so fearful of those surprising situations like reading out loud. Reading out loud is so, for me, it, it was uh, traumatic because 
you know, I'm a lot older than you are, Michaela. So uh, back in my day, <laughs> um, teachers didn't really have an, you know, you know, a concept or, or, you know, notion of what a stutter was. They mm. would always, you know, label me as, you know, uh, um, I was too anxious. I was too ex, oh. ex, you know, cited. Um, when it was time to read out loud in, you know, class, they would go down the row. And and so, I I mean, I physically, you know, knowing that you are number four in the row, you know, okay. and the first kid <laughs> has begun to read. And, it, and with each person done, your heart hurts a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Your hands are sweating. You physically cannot move because you're terrified and then when it comes to your turn they have you st stand up you know and that's also difficult because <laughs> mm -hmm. you're like in shock and they give you the paragraph and so to me that was like the longest paragraph mm -hmm. i have ever seen you know and knowing the first word I will have a hard time with. And, and so I tried it. I stuttered severely. And that's when the other kids would point and laugh. And that's when I, I stopped. And then I just, wow. you know, I just, you know, took my chair and the kid behind me to make matters worse, <laughs> had to read my paragraph. Oh, <laughs> I know that I was <laughs> oh. that, that I was not able to read. And from that day on, I said, that's it. That will never happen to me. And so, so as the, you know, time progressed and we had to read out loud, I would always raise my hand and go to the boys restroom. Yes, because, I would do the same. Yes, yes. Because I did not want to go through the, the, that again. Um, and so I did that all through grade school, all through junior high, all through high school. I did it in college because, number one, when you start school, you know, on day one, you have to give introductions. Mm -hmm. And so every kid has to get up, you know, hi, I'm Pedro, you know, da 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 um, and so I did that once. And so, uh, you know, it, it was very bad. And so <laughs> for the next time, what I did, and this is just me, th th this is how I handled it. I would always miss the first two days of school. That way I, I didn't have to give my introduction. Isn't it and crazy how powerful that fear is? Oh my gosh, it is unbelievably p powerful because I did that all through junior high, all through high school. I did it even in college. You know, I would just on purpose miss the f first two days. Um, and so on day th three, you know, I would just walk in and get my book and and it was perfect because they never you know, had me to get up and give an intro because they were, you know, um, they had already st st started the school curriculum. So, you know, that's how I handled it, you know, because, you know, like you said, the fear, it was just too powerful. It's paralyzing. How did your parents react to that of you missing school? Well, Michaela, that's a good question because I didn't tell them. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Michaela, yeah, for outing me to my parents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to edit that part out, Michaela. So, uh, <laughs> um, you had to be creative, and so you know, I would hop on the bus, you know, like I'm going to school, and so I would, you know, get to the school, and then I would walk down the street and either hang out at a park. Or go to the local gas st st station and you know you know get some candy mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and and just hang out all day, you know, until I would hop on the bus and go home and go home, you know. And when the report cards came in, you know, back then they would write on them Mm -hmm. with an ink pen. Um, And so I got a little creative. And I mean, Pedro, you have to do what you got to do, Michaela. <laughs> I mean, I was <laughs> I had to survive because I mean, my parents were strict. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I learned how to m- 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 to m- manipulate the numbers, you know, to work in my favor. Um, but, you know, you just had to do what you had to do to survive. And, and, and there you go. <laughs> Stuttering also makes you so resourceful. Yes, and extremely creative. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Agree. Piggybacking on that um, issue, so do you have any advice for parents and teachers with regards to children who stutter? I think one of the most important things that people can do when they are speaking to someone who stutters or have a child that stutters is to not make them feel as though they are running against time. Because I feel that whenever we feel rushed or when somebody who stutters feels like they're on a stopwatch, the stuttering gets so much worse. So I think the one thing that they can do is just give them time and not feel rushed with their answer. Do you think that it's a good idea to have everyone work as a team, like the parent, the school teacher, and the speech therapist? I think if the stuttering is very severe and it is affecting the child's life extremely, then the child should definitely disclose to the teacher that they have a stuttering Because unfortunately, nowadays, not many people actually know what stuttering means and what it is like for the person who stutters. Because I feel like with stuttering, it takes one. It takes one to know one. So disclosing about it and telling them possibly what they could do in order to make the child feel more calm, that definitely helps. That's a very good point. Now, let's switch gears. So, job-wise, have you ever experienced discrimination because of your stutter? Not really. I think for me, the worst part was that I knew that I could do better, but that I wasn't because I was avoiding speaking situations or because I was scared of, of stuttering. And also just the physical and mental aspect of stuttering. Because I don't know about you, but for me, stuttering is exhausting. When I used to stutter, I would feel mentally and physically drained. We are in the same boat, Michaela, because, I mean, I tell everybody who doesn't have a clue um, as to what is a stutter. All day long, I am in constant, um, I'm tense all day long. All of my organs are tense. You know, I'm trying to get the word out. Um, I'm trying to breathe. I'm trying to focus Mm -hmm. on the words, you, you know. And so in my head, when I'm talking to a person, I am also thinking about the words that are coming down the pike. Mm. And if there are hard words, as I'm still talking to the individual, in my head, I am replacing those hard words with much easier words as I'm still having the conversation. And so I'm at the end, I am just completely drained. And at the end of the day, I come home, I plop on the couch, I don't want to talk to anybody. I want to sit in complete quiet. And, you know, most of the time I'll just pass out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. 
because I'm tired. But I mean, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, it is draining physically, mentally, psychologically. I mean, it just takes everything out of you until you... It's real gymnastics in your mind when you stutter. Yes, it does. Oh, my gosh. Yes, it it does. So have you ever experienced depression because of your stutter? Definitely. I think it wasn't until I learned about the Del Ferro method that I really got out of it. Because when you live a parallel identity, which is kind of like hiding who you really want to be, or not being able to communicate the way that you want to communicate with the people that you want to speak to. For me, it was as if I was hiding who I really was. And that really frustrated me. Because we can speak, normally we can speak fine in other situations or when we're on our own, by ourselves. But then suddenly in certain situations, we will stutter. So it, it wasn't until I did the Del Ferro method and that I learned a technique to take back control of my speech that I started to get out of that feeling of depression. Wow, that is great. Um, what I tell a lot of people who st 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 stutter um, is that we all have our dark days when you know nothing comes out you know you are you know trying to accomplish you know a task and your speech is not allowing you to mm -hmm. um, that's when it is important to have a good support system around you of, you know, of, you know, people who are nurturing, people who are supportive, people who understand. And that way you can just get it off of your chest. They can, you know, maybe give you some tips, you know, or whatnot, or just better yet, just listen. You know, that way you are validated in your feelings. And that way you can, you know, move move past it mm. you know i mean so i stress to everybody if you ever have a bad day you know if the you know darkness is is you know taken over reach out and ask for help you know there are a lot of people out there who 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 um are there to help you and guide you and support you and so i just say reach out Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever done this? Um, when I'm talking and if there is a block, I will tap my leg, I will tap my face, I will tap my foot to hopefully get the block out <laughs> eventually. Have you, ever, have you ever tried that? So I used to do that a lot before I learned the new technique that I'm applying now. Because I think that is a lot of that secondary behavior that people have when they stutter, right? The problem with that is I think that after a time, after a certain time, we get used to it. And then it can lose its power. So for me, it was something that I would do sometimes, but that it wasn't something that would make me stop stuttering. I gotcha. Because, I mean... We're all different in our journey of speech. You know, granted, we all have that one common bond that you are not alone. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, f for me, I'm over the years, you know, I have a huge toolbox. And so I put all of the tools and tricks and techniques that I have learned over my 43 years of stuttering mm -hmm. to help me whenever I get into a block. And so when I tell people, because nowadays I disclose, I tell everybody, I have a stutter. This is what you will see 
and here and here is what you might hear from me. I want to just let you know that way you are prepared because when I have a block, you know, my eyes may close. I stop breathing. My arms are going all over the place. I'm tapping my foot. And for some people, they might question if I'm having a medical emergency, <laughs> which I am not. I'm just, you know, I have a severe block, <laughs> you know, and so my goal is to not pass out, you know, and so um, I use all these tips and tricks and, uh, you know, techniques to help me with my blocks, because when I disclose, you are um, educating that person. Mm -hmm. So for the next time they encounter another person who has a stutter, stammer, um, they will be better pre pre prepared. Yeah, I think it's important that people know what it actually is to stutter and that some people just can't control the way that they look or the way that they will come across when they're going through a block, for example. Do you ever have any fluency phases? Yes, I do. There will be um, a week where I'm just, I am fantastic. I mean, I can go th through a drive through. Hello, Taco Bell. And uh, I <laughs> And I, I mean, it just all comes out. And there are weeks where nothing comes out. Wow. Isn't that crazy? It How is. you can be fluent on some days. And I think that was one of the things that for me got me the most, that really got me feeling so just frustrated because it basically shows that you are, in fact, capable of saying certain things on certain times. But then something will happen where you suddenly stutter. So I think that was always something that really got to me where I was like, I can physically say that. I can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Now, this is the one question that I have been looking forward to to asking you because I want you to give me all of the details. I mean, you tell me everything <laughs> about this. So here we go. What is the most effective technique that you do for fluency? So tell me everything. Well, I guess you can only say the Delferro method in this case for me. It is an approach. It is a course that teaches you a method to speak fluently. And they were the first ones that ever told me that I could overcome my stuttering. Because for years before that, people were like, you just have to accept it. And not only that, but the teachers of the course are people who have overcome their stuttering. And they have been fluent ever since. So... That technique that they, uh, the, 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 the technique that they taught me was something that made me see that there is a way of you gaining back control of your speech. And that for the first time, it was a kind of a method that was challenging me to question my belief system. And that was giving me an opportunity to create a new reality for myself. Wow, that is awesome. That is truly awesome. And so you and I have a friend in common, Daniel Lapi, a.k.a. Hi. Daniel Lopriore. Shout out to Daniel. Daniel, what, what? <laughs> woo woo. Danny is awesome. And... And so he went on, um, he had also attended the Del Ferro um, w workshop or, you know, um, conference. And he has a wonderful YouTube channel mm -hmm. and he has awesome v videos. And, and so I, I am, my heart is, is, is full because I, love 
how there are people out there like you, like Danny, like a whole bunch of others who who are just out there, you know, and they are so positive. They are uh, they are so nurturing and they are talking about their speech journeys because, you know, we all have d d d different journeys. And so he he also had great results and so um yeah danny is also um hashtag awesome so just FYI. <laughs> definitely <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was amazing to see the progression that he did after the course i mean that was amazing and it's also the personality of him that is almost like starting to flourish now oh yes that was one of the most amazing things about watching his journey with, uh, you know, with, with doing the Del Ferro method. And it's funny because when you do the method, when you learn the method, it is not only about learning fluency. That is something that I feel is very important to stress. It is about you for the first time deciding to prioritize yourself and to respect your journey of healing. Because for a lot of people, they think, oh, it's a, just a technique and then you need to speak fluent the whole time. It's so much more than that, Pedro. It's about you for the first time deciding to prioritize yourself. And that also requires you to sometimes maybe do things that you wouldn't do before. It is for you demanding space. For you to not being the quiet one all the time. It is a journey that requires you to take responsibility for your happiness. And that was something that for me was very profound in my development. Because it was suddenly that I was given a tool that would allow me to say exactly what I wanted to say, how I wanted to say it, without needing to worry about stuttering and not being able to say the words. And even now, sometimes I still require to take a pause and to give myself time before speaking. Because very often I feel that when we stutter, we feel that we need to respond immediately to someone. We think that we need to speak right away. We don't give ourselves time to even think about what we want to say and prepare ourselves before saying it. And that is something that we are allowed to do. No one ever really told us that we're not allowed to do that. And so it, it was when I started to really to adapt those, those things in my daily life, of course, together with the exercises that I need to do daily and me also not avoiding situations. But it is, but it is all of these things that with time have allowed me to finally be the person that I want to be because I'm not pretending anymore. I don't need to say another word instead of the word that I actually wanted to say. I don't need to make gymnastics in my mind. So it's kind of a feeling of peace that you get when you apply the method. And yeah, just once you start putting in that work. Wow. That is awesome that is profound oh my um you know got goosebumps <laughs> <laughs> you made some very great points and so two points i want to you know touch back on is getting out of your comfort zone because i can't tell you that i lived in there for a very long time you know people would tell me that i could not hold a job because of my stutter. I would never get married because of my stutter. I would never have a career. I would never attend college. And that I would be 
better off if I st stayed at home and applied for disability and get my check mm -hmm. um, every month. And, s you know, when you're told that almost every day, every month, every year, you tend to believe it. Yes. Isn't which that is, crazy? It is. It is. Because, you know, my um, tipping point was when I turned 40. And, you know, that's when I said, I'm done. I am done. Because I was tired of being drained every single day. And so I told myself that other people's opinions will not be my reality. And that is a quote from Les Brown, who is just another hashtag awesome person. Because after I told myself, I'm done, I have a stutter, life goes on. And so after I took back the control of m my life, I mean, things got so much better. I mean, uh, you brought up an another good point on, you know, giving time. Because we live in a microwave s s world where it all has to be done quickly. Um, and if you're a person who stutters, I mean, that just isn't compatible. The square peg will not go in the circle mm -hmm. spot. Um, and those were the two great points that I really, I mean, was very pleased to hear from you because we do have to take the time. We have something to say and it has value. So I'm going to take my time and you as a listener, <laughs> you're going to be patient, supportive and nurturing until Pedro gets out what he needs to get out. So let me ask you this question because it this is a very hot topic. I mean, ooh, it is a super hot topic. And so when I ask people, the answers are split right down the middle. So l let me ask you, Michaela Miski Maya, <laughs> do you let others finish your sentences? I have to say I've not really had experiences recently where people would need to finish my sentence because I've been able to speak pretty well. Um, but I think that people shouldn't get distracted by people finishing their sentences. I think it's important that you still say what you want to say even though the person already finished it for you. Because it's not even just about the sentence. It's about you claiming your space and saying what you want to say. It's funny because for me, actually, since we're talking about people finishing people's sentences, one of the things in the Del Faro method that they teach you is that before you speak, you you need to think of the sentence before. Then you apply the method, and then you will only speak when you feel ready to speak. And that can cause a bit of confusion in the counterpart in the beginning, because you are standing in line to order food or, you know, whatever. The person talks to you, and then you basically take a few seconds before you actually start to speak because you are allowing yourself to think of the sentence, do the steps that they taught you, and then start speaking. And the amazing thing is that when you do start speaking, you will actually end up speaking fluently. Because you do not let the noise around you define your speech. You're so focused with yourself and the breathing and saying what you want to say that once you get ready to say the sentence, you feel so 
calm and so confident that when the words come out, they are fluent. That is awesome. That is awesome. And so have you ever been asked, you know, as you are doing this, have you forgotten your name? Have you forgotten your order? <laughs> Has it happened to you? Because <laughs> it's happened to me, Michaela. <laughs> but I want to hear I... your story. <laughs> so if I do take some time before I get to answer, then usually what I say is that I'm applying a speech therapy for my stuttering. And then they're like, oh, okay, sorry, sure, go ahead. Wow. And then I'll take my time, and then it comes out, and then they're like, are you sure you stutter? <laughs> <laughs> How cool. But it's also the fear, I think, of us uh, regarding that pause of silence, don't you think? Although the, the uh, um, we call that the pause of death. <laughs> <laughs> That long, like that in the beginning. Yes, that 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 long pause, and in that pause, your heart is beating faster and faster, and your breathing gets more shallow, and your hands are sweating, and they're looking at you like, um, are we gonna have to call nine one one on you, sir? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's what I think. Sometimes I felt that it was a lot in my head. Like when they wouldn't say, did you forget uh, your name or, you know, those things. Sometimes that fear that I would feel before. Sometimes I felt that it was just me thinking that I was doing something wrong or not capable. Whereas the person was just standing there waiting and ready to receive whatever I was going to say. That is something that I noticed when I was starting to apply the method is that, that sometimes people wouldn't even notice that I was doing the method. They would kind of just see me as somebody that takes their time before they start the sentence. Because what, what happens when we stutter is that we will start the sentence and then while we already started, the sentence is when we stutter. And that's when people see, okay, they've already started to speak. So what's going on? But when you don't even start the sentence, then when you take your time to speak, take your time before, and then speak when you're ready, they usually don't think it's a weird thing. How interesting. Very, very, very interesting. So you briefly touched on this um, earlier, but, you know, you know, this is an, another hot topic. OK, this is hot topic number two. I'm out of three. So here goes number two. So when you are alone, can you speak without stuttering? Yes. Wow, that is interesting because you know how we're all different and. And so when I'm alone, I still stutter. When I'm in the shower and having a conversation, as we all do, uh, you know, I still Clearly. stutter. <laughs> I still stutter when I'm talking um, to my dog, Ruby Jean. You know, uh, I may have a block or two. And so, I mean, but when I ask uh, 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 um, other people who stutter, stutter you know it's just split right uh, right down the, the middle 50 50. Mm. that's really interesting i don't know i think maybe it also maybe it's also got to, to do with the fact that people that stutter for so long they just don't know it any other way right that's a good point. For me, it was really difficult when I did the the therapy at the Del Faro to accept a different reality. So when they would teach me the method, it was like, you can say your name without stuttering. Now introduce yourself. Go. And when I would apply the method, the words would come out fluently. And for me, it was almost like 
This is going to get very deep. <laughs> it's all good. This space is a nurturing space. <laughs> so you go on, Michaela. But it was almost like a part of me was dying. A part of me that I only knew as somebody who stuttered. And that suddenly I was able to actually say the things the way that I wanted to. And that for me was such a new experience and it was so emotional and just so life-changing. That's a powerful moment in your life because I can relate 100% that when I turned 40, the old the old Pedro who was just worried about what everyone thought, you know, I mean, I worried about everything. I was a people pleaser because if I couldn't talk right, I would help you out in, you know, different ways. Um, trying to be a, a good friend. But, you know, at 40, I said, no more. And so the old Pedro, he's gone. And he is completely the, the gone is, is the angry boy who would get extremely irate and would be locked up in his bedroom and turn out the light and just think, gosh, I'm so stupid. You know, maybe everybody is right. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. Nobody is going to be my friend. Nobody is going to love me. And maybe they're all right. And that what and when I turn 40, that old Pedro, he's now gone. You know, that part of me is no longer here. And now there's a Pedro, the happy Pedro. I mean, I don't care if I have a block, I will get through it. And if I'm having a good day, I will go to Taco Bell and then to, you know, Dairy Queen and, you know, and give me some ice cream cone. <laughs> and I mean, and, you know, and I will uh, continue on because you have to keep moving forward because life is rough. Life is extremely rough. It will knock you down. And so what I had learned is when when life knocks you down, you get back up. And when they knock you down again, you get back up. Because every time you get back up, you are learning something that you are going to apply for the next time. That way you are getting stronger. You are building more confidence. You are building more courage. And according to John Maxwell, he wrote an awesome book on leadership. You are building on the law of momentum. So every day I'm going to get better and stronger and braver. And so that way, whatever happens, I got this. I got this. That's amazing, Pedro. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let's talk about your career path. Did you ever think that your stutter might hold you back from having a career? Hmm. I felt that it definitely made me avoid certain situations and not take advantage of certain opportunities. And it wasn't until I started applying the method that I'm applying now that I felt a lot more capable of, of actually starting to do the things that I wanted to do. Because it wasn't about me not wanting to stutter in the sense that people weren't allowed to know that I stuttered. But it was more of me just always, just always living in fear. And I felt that that fear was very paralyzing for me. And it wasn't, then it wasn't good for me. So it wasn't until I started to, you know, be open about applying the method also in the workspace that I felt that I was really 
being the person that I wanted to be and do the things that I want to do. Wow, that is powerful because like what you had um, told me previously, the power of, you know, having having a stutter because I was pre-law um, in school because my goal was, you know, I want, you know, I wanted to be an awesome attorney and say, I object. And I, <laughs> you know, I moved to strike and uh, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> and then one day I watched a movie. I don't know if you've ever s- s- seen this movie called My Cousin Vinny. No, I haven't. There is a lawyer who has a severe stutter and they're in court and the judge um, has the attorney get up and make their um, their um, opening remark. And so, you know, everything looks normal. And so this attorney, you know, he gets up and, you know, he fixes his, you know, he uh, he buttons up his his uh, coat jacket and then he walks over to the to the jury and he gives his opening remarks and his stutter is so severe and he's sputtering and spitting on the jury on accident and their eyes are just big and their mouths are gaping open wide and i thought is that going to be me is that going to be pedro in a courtroom and that following Monday, I went in, into the school counselor's office. I changed my major from pre-law to psychology because I thought I can help people in a different way. And going back to your previous statement, the power, the power, the fear. I mean, it is so, I mean, it's so huge. That, I mean, it made me completely change my complete school trajectory. But do you feel that it was the fear that dominated that decision? Oh, it was. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, fear. I mean, it was it was at the top. It was at the top because I still want to study law now. Oh, God, yes. I love the law. I mean, I've worked in courthouses and and jails and prisons, and I love being in a courtroom. I mean, I love the action. I love the drama. I mean, I love the hard work of reading book after book after book and, you know, and um, getting up and talking to the judge. I mean, I find that so fascinating that, you know, we will still get to see you in a courthouse. Well, maybe in a different capacity if I break the law, <laughs> which I, I won't do. Without objection. <laughs> objection, Your Honor. <laughs> but uh, um, choosing the field that um, I am that I am in now, you know, I am happy with 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 you know helping people in a you know different way. But had I not, you know, I mean, you can. W- ruminate in your head for days on end, you know, what if, and what if, and what if, Mm -hmm. you know, what if I hadn't watched that at the movie theater, you know, what if I hadn't been attacked by a dog at the age of five that actually caused my stuttering, you know, what if, and what if, you know, and so I just, I stopped thinking, what if, because I wasn't living um and that is what i had found out when i turned 40 you hear um, Oprah talking about her aha moment mm-hmm. well my aha moment is when i turned the big 40 and so i told myself i'm a grown man why am i worrying about what other people think about my stutter and once i made that flip i mean everything went away the stress the anger the the fear and now i mean i'm just living my best life i'm talking to awesome people like you michaela i mean i am just doing my thing and life is good life is good that's great pedro i'm so glad that you found something 
that you were able to kind of face the fear and just do your thing. That's amazing. Thank you. Now, here comes the third hot topic. All right, so um, are you ready? Because it's a very hot topic. I mean, woo. Drum rolls, please. <laughs> so how was or how is dating with having a stutter? Because as you know, dating is hard as it is when you're out there. But if you have a stutter, it's like a thousand times harder. How did you handle dating with having a stutter? Well, I am married now, um, but I have to say that it never really was that dominant, oddly enough. Um, but today, I must say that my husband is very supportive in my journey of speech. Because it's also not easy you supporting somebody who has actively made a decision for herself. And with me doing these exercises and just focusing on my speech is something that inevitably affects the partner. So I am very grateful to him and just very thankful that he has been so supportive and just, you know, supporting me in my decision and being there for me. That is wonderful go husband because <laughs> it is important to have your partner in life to be supportive of you during this journey because when we have those dark days we 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 lean on them yeah they tell us that it's going to be all right they tell us that we are still loved and that everything's fine, and you are going to be okay, and I'm here for you. And those are powerful words. I am here for you. I'm here to support you. So it is awesome that you have a fantastic husband who is who is just right there behind you 100%. That's fantastic. Now, we have all of this new technology. I mean, it's emerging everywhere. You have the Google Home, you have Alexa, and you have the one with Apple that starts with an S that I have very much difficulty with. Um, do you think that all this new technology is helpful or hurtful to people who stutter? Hmm. I don't think it's hurtful for people who stutter. Especially when you're parting from the notion that you shouldn't avoid situations. But on a different note, I personally don't like these technologies because they freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I don't like someone knowing everything that I say or that I am looking for. So I just don't use them. Um, I agree one million percent. I don't have those in my home, although my um, SUV has all these voice um, activated gadgets. And so I just push the button, you know, <laughs> 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 that's what I do. It's just Pedro. It's just me. So, so tell me of a challenge that you had to overcome speech wise and how did you do it? Um, hmm. mm, I, I need to say again, it's when I started applying the Dolphero method because it forced me to stop avoiding situations. And for the first time, I, for the first time, I, had to prioritize myself. So it was me focusing on myself and on deciding to do whatever it was that needed to be done in order to achieve a certain goal. So in the beginning of the therapy, I would, 
needs to apply the method in such a strong way that I needed to take a lot of time before I was able to say something, to say a sentence. And that silence that we were talking about before, that is the fear that you feel of, oh my God, what are they thinking of me, blah, blah, blah. You need to learn to shut that out. And you needed to focus on yourself. And you needed to allow yourself to take time. So I think that for me was the most difficult thing in regards to in regards to my speech because it required me to kind of face that fear for the first time in a very strong way and not give in to it wow i mean i mean you you just hit it right on on the head you know it's the f word fear i mean that word for a majority of my life had complete control it had complete control, but not no more, Michaela. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here is a deep question. So what has stuttering taught you? Resilience and empathy. Those are mine as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're twins. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, I can't tell you. I mean, how it um, it has just taught me to just get back up and keep on moving forward. Never give up. Never give up. So what advice would you give to another person who stutters? Don't let the fear of other people's possible opinion define your journey. Well, wow, that is great advice. That's powerful. That's powerful. Now, if you had the opportunity to give insight to the to the world on a on a global stage, what message would you convey? Hmm. That's a strong one. I think I would tell them that. If you are a person that stutters, you need to keep striving and keep moving and to never let the, the fear of you possibly failing and possibly not being loved by everyone or accepted by everyone, to not let that define the version of yourself. And that it is whatever it is that you want for yourself, that if you are willing to put in the work, that you're going to make it. That's a great message. I mean, you you just keep on giving me goosebumps, Michaela. That was uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. And so I would I would like to tell you thank you thank you for spending your day with me thank you for sh sharing your story be be because i believe there's healing in sh sharing um i think you are hashtag awesome hashtag courageous and i have thoroughly enjoyed our conversation today Thank you so much, Pedro. And I also wanted to thank you for the work that you do and what you mean to the people that are listening out there. Because I am sure that what you say is so important to them and that they have spent a lot of their life not really knowing anybody else that stuttered or that that knows what they're going through. So I also wanted to applaud you for the work that you do. Thank you, Michaela. That, that means a great deal to me. Thank you so much. Now I have a, well, 
I mean, I think I have the best audience. They are global. And so what if they want to reach out to you to, you know, find some more um, information on 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 you and your your YouTube channel or the Del Faro? I mean, how would they be able to to reach you? All right, so they can reach me on Instagram and Facebook uh, via the Speaking Michaela. And also I've got a, uh, and besides that, I have the YouTube channel, which is also Speaking Michaela, where they can also reach out to me. And if they want to find out more about the Del Ferro method, then they can also look it up online, which is at stuttering um, delfaro.com. Thank you, Michaela. Um, we'll have all those links in the in the podcast show notes. And so I want to thank you again. And so I know, I know that this will not be our last conversation because there are many more topics that I would that I would like to cover so down the road I would I would love to have you back thank you Pedro I would love to be back all right thank you and I hope you have a great day you too bye if you like this podcast head on over to podchaser.com subscribe rate and review thank you for listening and we will talk again <laughs>